2017 is the 20th anniversary of the Great Flood of 97, which took out the better part of downtown, took out a lot of roads in town, and really, maybe not woke the town up, but reminded the town that the rivers are a big part of our community and they're, they're dynamic. The flooding happened at night. Uh, just as daylight was breaking, all the road behind me was basically underwater, and there was a convenience store gas station that had water 10 feet high on the inside of it. So it came up very fast and uh, caused a lot of damage, essentially wiping out the roads on both sides of town and isolating the town. I mean, they say Montgomery became an island. It was over very quickly. The next day the sun was out and shining and people started cleaning up. And then it took a, basically almost a year of cleanup to get the town back to some sense of normalcy. Uh, all of these houses were filled with water all, all across the street. The fuel tanks in the cellar just tipped right up and turned over. Fuel all dumped all into there. The floods of 97 and subsequent events um, where we've seen flooding in town or the river actually moving, it's just a constant reminder that as a town we have to keep thinking about how we live with and exist with these rivers for all the positives they bring to our community and then what challenges they provide us in the future and how we can best adapt to those challenges. So those things really do stick with, with members of the community and influence their um, recognition of the, of the potential problem and their willingness to address it through planning and zoning. When we started working with Montgomery, we were really pulled in through the Regional Planning Commission in this area, it's Northwest Regional Planning Commission. And working with Montgomery, I think one of the things that we found is that it was really a community-led effort. We we're looking to help provide support to towns and help facilitate some of that discussion around how they look at growth, how they look at economic development, how they look at historic preservation in the context of a river running through the middle of their downtown. When a community reaches out to the Rivers Program to start working with them on looking at floodplain and river corridor considerations, a lot of what we bring initially is some of our maps. The Natural Resource Atlas map is a great tool and that's a web-based mapping program and the corridors are on that as a layer. The river corridor is really a way of trying to allow room for a river process to play out. It's based on the setting, the landscape setting, it's based on the soils and the geology of the area, it's based on the size of the river. It's really an, an area to allow that river to move within. The tool that is also great to use in conjunction with that is the LIDAR. And the LIDAR is a way for you to look at the actual shape of the land. The LIDAR maps specifically were crucial in our process because looking at the bare earth picture, you can see where the river has been in the past, where it is now, and then where it's probably going to move in the future. When the maps were first presented to the Planning Commission and the Commission first started to discuss adopting them, there, there were some you know, not necessarily conflicts, but definitely hesitations with people in town. However, as we looked at these maps and sat with individual landowners who had expressed concern, and as the town as a whole looked at the maps of where the river corridors are, looked at the LIDAR maps to show how rivers are moving or have moved in the past, people acknowledged that these hazards exist and they're real. And pretty much everybody came around to accepting and agreeing that as we grow as a town, we need to you know, acknowledge that development in these areas needs to be handled a certain way or just not developed to allow for the rivers to do their thing. We have communities that are starting to think more about how they allow development to occur within their floodplains or if they're gonna adopt river corridors, how it may occur within their river corridor. Flood storage is a big piece of this because if we fill floodplains in, we're sending more water somewhere. Either the water is going to get higher on neighboring properties or that water is going to go downstream to other communities. So the concept of no adverse impact is that we're not trying to limit the ability for someone to develop, but we're also trying to think of how that development may impact neighboring developments. One other thing that um, influenced Montgomery's decision to adopt the River Corridor bylaws in our, in our new zo uh, zoning revisions was the um, emergency relief assistance funding, the ERAF funding, and the fact that if we adopted these 
we would um, get a higher percentage of funding in the event of a natural disaster. But more importantly, I think it's the idea that if we limit the development within these areas, we're going to limit the potential damage to somebody's home or we're going to limit the uh, potential to put some of our first responders at risk responding to this. You know, when it's three o'clock in the morning and the fire department is trying to pull a, a home out of a river, you know, there's not just property, but it's people's lives at stake. So if we can avoid those kind of things in the future, that's, that's our main goal. So any other town that is, you know, at the, at the very beginning of this process, I'd say, you know, get in touch with the regional planning, get in touch with the state, and um, invite them to the table, invite them to the discussion, to bring the resources to look at and review and look at the opportunities that exist to protect these elements within your own community. You know, again, a lot of this is looking at the opportunities that are out there to do these things, not necessarily responding to some sort of regulatory environment that's forcing you to do it. And being at the table with community members that live in the community is a great um, opportunity to, to tailor these uh, bylaws and plans to fit that individual community. You know, it should be a, a, a bottom-up approach, not a top-down approach.